All right, we are going to use this video to talk about obstacles. An obstacle is anything that gets in the way of your character successfully completing the mission. So you could use a character from here as your obstacle. Like maybe have Frank the, whatever he is, zipping around your maze or whatever you want to do. Uh, or for more flexibility, you could just create your own obstacle. And you would do that by clicking on the cat and clicking on the paintbrush and making your own obstacle. Now, before you begin, it's important that your obstacle be the same color as the background of your maze. That will stop you from having to write um, extra scripts for different colors if they're all the same color. So the way to do that is to go over to the maze uh, backdrop, click on it so it shows up here. And then look at the fill color, which now is blue, and you want to make it the same color as the maze. So if you click on that, go down to the eyedropper, and then come out here and click where that square is in the middle, and you'll see that it just changed to the color of the maze. So you just did it. Now you can go back to coding and create your maze obstacle. So the easiest one to do is a moving wall. Although there is a little trick to this and I'll show you. If you draw the wall, make sure that the middle of the wall aligns with the crosshair on the screen. All right, you notice now that this wall is probably too big. So you can shrink it here. Just make sure you recenter it. And now that may be good. Or you could always use the size thing here to make it smaller. But you know what, that looks pretty good. Let me just, I don't know why these are here. Let me get rid of these. All right, so you've got your sprite, which is a wall. Now you can go code it. Now that you have your obstacle, your moving wall, you're ready to start coding. So let's think of a couple numbers. You want it to start here. So that will be at a little higher. Negative, negative 11 two okay so that's where we wanted to start so let's start our scripting that way when flag is clicked go to negative 11 two because that's where the block will start when the game starts okay we also want it pointing down because it's going to go down first and we also want to set the rotation style so it doesn't flip around and mess everything up. So we'll set the rotation style left and right. And we will point in the direction down, which is 180 degrees. All right, that starts our guy off in the right spot. Now, what we have to do is the rest of it put into a forever loop. So if I do forever, He's going to glide down to the spot we want it to be. So if we start him here at negative 11 and 2, we want him to go down to negative 11. Well, I'll just put it in here. All right. The y-axis is good. So to negative 11, negative 63. So we're going to have him glide down to that spot. It's already there because that's where I put the thing. So he's going to glide down. We want to have him go down to negative 11, negative 65. Then we want him to have him wait a second before he goes back up because you don't want to have him come right back up or your character will never get past. And then we want to point him back up again. So let's point him in the direction that we want him to go again. 
So now he wants to go up, we point him at zero. And then we have him do this again, except we change it back to this number. So go to or glide to and we can just copy what it says. Negative 11 and two. It's the same as this one because this is where we want him to go again. So then when he gets at the top, we're gonna have him wait a second again. So let's get another weight because he's got a weight at the top and at the bottom. And then we have to do the point again. So we'll start going down again. So point in direction, 180, back up in motion. We will change that to point in direction zero. Now, that may seem confusing for a second, but let's go through this for a second. All right, so when the game starts, he's where he should be. His rotation style is set so he doesn't flip, and he's pointing down. Now, inside this forever loop, he's going to go down. He's going to wait a second. He's going to turn around. He's going to come back up. He's going to wait a second. Then he's going to turn around again. And then he's going to go down again. So let's see if this works. Okay, so you see how it works? So this obstacle gives you a slight chance to get past if you make the wait time slower, it will go faster. So I have this waiting uh, that much, and I have this one waiting that much. So now it's only half a second time in between. So now it's a little bit harder to get past because he's moving a little faster. So you can decide if you want to do that. And you can also have the glide go faster, which would make the piece move up and down faster. The higher you make it, the slower it goes, and the lower you make it, the faster it goes. So you'd have to knock that down below one to make it move faster. So that's how you create the moving wall. Okay, so next let's talk about the revolving bar. That one is a little more complicated to make, but a lot easier to code. So let me show you what I mean. If we go to make a, another character, you're going to have to make sure this time that both the fill and the line are red. All right, if it's not red, do the same thing you did before. Go to the background, say it's blue. So you choose the color and you make sure it turns red. And then you do the same thing with the line. Well, it just did it with the line. Okay. And then the fill is still red, so we're good to go. All right, so we're going back to the code and we're gonna create a new sprite. And one thing I didn't do, which I should, because you should always do it, is make the name of your sprite something you'll remember so you don't have to keep going back and looking for it. So this is the wall. And we will call this one the bar. So we're going to create this bar new. So simply, we're going to draw a circle. We're going to make sure it is, oops, get rid of that. We're going to make sure it is in the center. And that's way too big, so let's shrink it while we're here. That's not bad. Although it may be hard to move at this point. There we go, it's right in the center. All right, and then we just draw a line coming out from the center, straight up. Now it's hard to see because it's the same as the other one. But it does look kind of big, so let's make it a bit smaller because it looks like they're going to cover way too much space. So let me just um, hold the shift key down so I don't change the angle of the line. We're going to make it that small. And we are going to put it 
here. Okay. Now, there's one thing you have to remember, and that is where you put the center of the bar. And I'll show you that once we start coding it. Okay, but it's drawn. So now we go to code. So let's go back to code. And we'll start again with one flag is clicked. And watch how easy this is. When flag is clicked, forever, turn a certain amount of degrees. And that's all you have to do. And right or left, your choice. But let's keep it now at turn 15 degrees. Now let's see if that works. All right, so you see how that's working? Now, it might be working too fast. You could get your character through there, I'm sure. But if you want to change the speed, just change the number of degrees. If you want it to go slower, now it's only going five degrees. If you want it to go faster, if you want to be really difficult, that's a little too much. But you get the idea. So you can find a number that you're comfortable with. And that's all you had to do for that one. So like I said, that's very easy to code. Now here is where the interesting problem comes in. Let me stop this for a second. If you move the center of gravity, so we highlight this whole thing and we move it so that it's no longer lined up at the center and then we press it, watch what it does. See, it's kind of moving all around the place and it's not based on the center, which would be right about here. So, I mean, it is something you might want to do if you want to consider having this cover two different spaces. You could move it away. Okay. Another option would be to put the bar in the middle. So now it spins as if there was a pin placed in the middle of it and it's spinning around that pin. And you could put maybe another circle on top and have it spin that way. So where it is in terms of the center is important to how it moves. All right, this is the one you use when you just want it to, to spin around the center of the bulb in the bottom. All right, so experiment with that. See how you like it. And that is really all you have to do for that one. So that, once you figure out where the center is, that one's a piece of cake. Just make sure you make it the right size and make sure you can find it. Because like I said, if you make it the same color, then forget where it is when it's not playing, you're going to have trouble. So make sure you know where it is. Okay. And that is the end of that one. And the other one, the other one that I put on there to show you is a vortex or a black hole or whatever you want to call it. So that again is simply a circle. This is a little bit harder to use simply because it, um, it changes color as it goes through. Although it doesn't have to, I guess. So I drew an outline. Now you don't have to make it just an outline. You could obviously fill in the color and just make it red in the middle. You would have to pick the color again, I guess. So right there. Okay, so now. Now the command we use for this is ghost. Ghost is a command that goes from zero to 100 and it fades something in and out. And strangely enough, I guess because it is called ghost, zero means it has no ghost effect, so it looks the way it should. And 100 means it has a 100% ghost effect, which means it's invisible. So you have to write a script that sets the ghost to go from 100 down to zero and back again. So let's put the ghost here and we will shrink its size so you can see the whole thing inside of the maze. 
like that. Now you could simply make it appear and disappear if you wanted to do that, or you could ghost it. I can show you both ways and I'll show you another command um, that's called random. So you can make it appear and disappear at random times. So let's look at that one first. We start off as usual when the flag is clicked. Okay, so in this time, all we wanted to do is hide and show. So let's drag those two out so we can use them. Show and hide. Okay, and in a forever loop, we are going to have it disappear and appear. So forever, and then I want to show you a operator called pick random from one to 20. Okay, so, or one to 10. This is going to, every time it runs through this, it's gonna pick a random number between the two numbers you picked. So we can do one to 10 to start with. Now, this is a circular command. So you have to find something that'll work inside of a circle that has a circle in it. And the one I'm looking for is wait. So now this is wait one seconds, but watch if I grab this and I put it in here, now it's gonna wait a random number of seconds between one and 10. So let's say it waits a random number of seconds then it hides. Then we do that again. We wait and we go back down to operators and pick random again wait a random number of seconds, and then show. So you never know between one and 10 seconds when it's going to hide and when it's going to show. Now, the other thing we have to do is probably make a copy of show so we can put it at the top so when the game starts, it's showing. So here's what it will do. It waits for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or 10 seconds, then it hides. Then it waits one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10 seconds, and it shows. So let's look. Watch it now. Okay, it's waiting. And there you go, it hides. And now it's waiting again for a random number of seconds. And then it's going to show again. See, we've seen how it went out real fast that time because it's doing random between one and 10. Now, if you want to make it more interesting, change the numbers to five. So now it'll work faster. So you may get past it or you may get right here and it pops up and you're in trouble because you're going to have to go back. So if you never know when it's going to pop up, you're gonna have some danger getting past it. And the lower you make these numbers, the faster it's gonna pop in and out. Okay. Now, it also means the lower you make the numbers, the less, the less different there is gonna be between them. So it might look like it's getting kind of regular, but it's not. Okay, so that's one. So you can make it appear and disappear at your choice. All right, now let me take this out of here so it stops working. So I can do another one. Now I can put this over here for now. It's not gonna do it as long as it's not connected to when the flag is clicked. Because I wanna show you the other one now. So we'll, we'll, take, we'll take the show and we'll put it back up top because we need that again. And then we need a forever loop. Right here. And we can do other things. We could actually have it appear at different places on this line instead of appearing and disappearing in the same spot. 
we could have it appearing in different places on this line. Now I'll let you figure that out. I'll give you a hint. It's got to be with the go to command and you've got to change the x axis number between whatever this is and whatever this is and have it appear. But we could also use ghost. And that is down here. So change something effect by 25. So we will change the ghost effect. Now remember what I said, the ghost effect is zero. It is all the way to the color it should be. And then it fades out gradually till you get to 100, which is completely transparent. Now this makes it hard to be an obstacle because it's not going to be the perfect color at the perfect time. So you may want to think about using this. So you're going to use change ghost effect and set ghost effect because you got to set it first. So we can do that up here. Set ghost effect to zero. That means it looks like this. And then forever, change ghost effect by 10 points until it gets to 100. So this is where it gets tricky because inside the forever loop now, you have to make it change only 10 times. So forever, repeat 10 times, change ghost effect by 10. That means it'll change to 10, then 20, then 30, then 40, all the way up to 100. Now, when it gets to the, up to 100, it'll stop because it can't go higher than 100. And then you've got to bring it back down again. So you just tell it to repeat 10 again. And this time, change the ghost effect. Let me copy that so we can have it. So if we change the ghost effect by 10 till it gets to 100, and we want to change it back to zero, then we can change the ghost effect by negative 10. And then it'll go from 100 to 90 to 80 to 70, all the way down to zero. Now, let's look over this code for a second. When the, cert, when the flag is clicked, show the circle, set the ghost effect to zero, so it's in full color, and then forever, have it change its effect by 10, 10 times, so it gets to 100, and then have it change its effect by negative 10 times, so it goes back to zero, and then do it again. So let's see if it works. Okay. Now you may want to put a weight in there because it's changing awfully fast. Your character would have a tough time getting through that. So if we take a weight and put it in there under control, so when it gets down to zero, in between the repeats, we can have it wait a second or wait maybe half a second so your character can get through and see what it looks like. Turn it off, turn it on again. Okay, so there, that kind of works. So if your character is down here, you've just got to time it so you can get through when it goes that way. So there's two different ways to make your little vortex work. You can use random numbers to hide it and show it when you want to or you can just fade it in and out. And there's other ways, like I said, you could, you could write a script that uh, once it hides, you can change the spot where it shows up. So it shows up here or it shows up here or anywhere else along this line. Because the Y axis would be the same because it's not going to go up and down. So you would just have to find out what this number is for the x-axis and what this number is for the x-axis and choose a random number in between those. And it'll keep moving up and down this line so you never know where it is. Okay, so those are the three that I made up. You've got the moving wall, you've got the swinging bar, 
and you've got the vortex. So if the cat moves over to the bar, let's see if it's coded right. There you go. See, so if he hits the bar, he's going to get hit. So you have to time it so you go past it. And if you don't, if you don't make it, that's what happens. Same thing will happen to this and this. Now, one word of advice, if you find that your character, which I was just doing, is having trouble getting to the carter because it goes up and down too far, change your move back for the cat. So, for instance, I have him moving 10 steps. Change it to 7 or 5 so he doesn't have to go as far in one step and you may be able to line him up better with your hallways. And that way you'll be able to get down to the vortexes or get to, well, get to the end when eventually. Okay, one other thing I wanted to show you about this, which I'll pick up in another video, is how to put a grabbable treasure down here. So like in this room, I can put a treasure that the cat would have to pick up before he leaves the dungeon. Okay, but that's going to be a separate video. So this is it for now. I hope that helped you do obstacles. And remember, as always, you can chat me up on the classroom chat, and I'll try to answer your questions, or I'll cover it the next time we meet in class. So remember, this is due three Fridays from now, February 26th, and I will be looking for your best work. Thank you, and goodbye.